Hello, well it's Locktail 61, the Pina Colada. Now as the song says, if you like Pina Colada and getting caught in the rain, well I'm a good chance of getting caught in Sydney's rain. But the problem is, I don't really like Pina Colada. I've had them a number of times at the beach, I've had them at bars, I've given them a try, and just can't sort of say that it's up there in my cocktail list. So it's with some trepidation that I've come to this cocktail in, uh, in the list of uh, uh, locked towels as we leave lockdown in Sydney. And I've been trying to find the right pina colada recipe to bring to you. Now in the research, I discovered that actually the name pina colada turned up in 1922 in a traveler magazine where it said, but the best of all is a pina colada, the juice of a perfectly ripe pineapple, rapidly shaken up with ice, sugar, lime and Bacardi rum in delicate proportions. So there was a pina colada by name, uh, and pina meaning pineapple and colada meaning strained, but it's not the pina colada that we know today. The pina colada we know today was invented in 1954, uh, most likely uh, by Ricardo, uh, sorry, not Ricardo, Ramon Monchito Marrero Perez. Uh, there's a, there was a bartender there at the same time called Ricardo Garcia, who also claims to um, in, have invented the uh, pina colada at the Caribbean Hilton Hotel in Puerto Rico. Uh, and in fact, uh, the Caribbean Hilton supports uh, Ramon Perez uh, in his claim, and they obviously claim to be the source of this most famous uh, cocktail. And in fact, it's in 1978, it became the official cocktail of uh, Puerto Rico. Now that recipe includes either coconut water or coconut cream. It, co coconut cream only uh, came into production in 1948, so certainly the 1954 origin story makes makes a lot of sense. Now, in looking for the recipes, uh, Caribbean Hilton have their own, um, and I made yesterday. I took the uh, day off from doing these videos because I was researching the pina colada, and we tried six of them. On, in addition to all the pina coladas I've I've had at other times, the uh, International Bartender Association's recipe is simple. It's pretty ordinary, it's quite an anemic uh, drink. It's not rich with, with very much flavor. If you went to a bar and had an International Bartender Association's pina colada, you wouldn't be very impressed. Then we had a look at the Caribbean Hilton's uh, one, and all of these will be on the website. You can follow the recipe or, or make all five of them and try them for yourself. And uh, the Caribbean Hilton one was better. Um, it's a blended cocktail. Also, I'm not a massive fan of blended cocktails, I prefer more traditional uh, construction methods, but a lot of pina colada recipes you have to blend. Uh, it was very creamy. It, had, it has both coconut cream and heavy cream in it. Uh, and then we tried Bacardi's official recipe, which is very different to, um, to the other two. There's no cream element at all. The coconut flavor comes from coconut water. It's a very pineapple heavy, uh, and a, as you would expect, rum heavy cocktail. Uh, that was sort of getting better into, into my palate. I'm, I'm not a massive creamy cocktail fan. And uh, then we had a look at some more contemporary ones. So Simon Difford has a great uh, recipe. It was, it was a much more pleasant cocktail. Uh, but he introduces cachaca, which adds a very distinctive cachaca flavor to it. So I guess that's moving a little bit away from the sort of more official um, recipes. But Simon's recipe was a good um, entry point for me. And then I had a look at Steve, the bartender's um, clarified pina colada, sort of turning that, filtering it through uh, curdled milk uh, to get a filtered, clear, almost clear uh, cocktail. That's on there as well. And I've played around with that a little bit. And that's actually the starting point for what I'm going to present to you now, which is my 2021 coming out of Sydney lockdown take on a pina colada. I don't think I can call it a pina colada because uh, like Simon Diffitt, I'm adding another spirit in addition to the rum. Uh, so I'm gonna call it a pina colada because I think it's, a, it's, it's still pineapple based, the pina, but this is a collision between different spirits and uh, different cultures and different cocktails and different eras. So uh, this is not gonna be an easy cocktail to make. If you wanna make what I'm presenting, be prepared. You first are gonna to have to produce your own simple syrup. That's, oh, sh that's easy enough. Two parts sugar, one part water. And then with that, you're going to need to do a version of the clarified pina colada. That's a long, slow process, putting it through a drip filter and waiting drop by drop for the end result. 
So here's the uh, end result. That's effectively a clarified pina colada cocktail right there. Just cool it down, put that in and you'll have, in fact, if you make enough of that before you do mine, you can try something that's close to Steve's, the bartender's um, clarified pina colada, or my slightly adjusted clarified pina colada, which is the base for this cocktail. So you need to make that. That's gonna take you a little bit of time. There's Bacardi rum, pineapple juice, a little bit of um, lime juice, coconut water, and then it's clarified through the curdling uh, milk, so it's added to milk, and then you wait while that comes through drop by drop into this clarified end result. Now this morning I've also added a little bit of additional fresh pineapple juice in there, hence the bit more pineapple colour, because I don't want to spend the time squeezing fresh pineapple juice from this fresh pineapple. The other part of that went in here. So the starting point for this is 75 mils of this clarified pina colada uh, recipe and also 15 mils of pineapple juice. So I've already made that the right proportion. So there's my 80 mils, 75 mils of the clarified pina colada and 15 mils of fresh pineapple juice. Then I also want some fresh lime juice. That original 1922 pina colada had uh, fresh uh, lime juice in it and some of the other recipes. I think Simon Diffords has lime juice in it. Um, I think Steve the bartender's from memory. You can see on the web website which ones. So we want 15 mils of fresh lime juice. There we go. Uh, a couple of them also call for falernum. So falernum is a sugar, ginger and other uh, mix. It's it's quite common in tropical cocktails and tiki cocktails. This Crawley's one is great. You can, if you really want to get adventurous, you can make your own falernum. I think I've set you enough challenges with this cocktail already. So 15 mils of, um, of falernum. And then this is, that's probably not a million miles away if we added some um, additional sort of creamy element and we either blended it or shook it. That'd still be in the wheelhouse of a sort of a more contemporary contemporary mixologist play on a pina colada. But instead of adding cachaca, and I appreciate what Simon um, did with the cachaca, and I think it, it it made a different cocktail, but it made a nice cocktail. A very cachaca, you, even with 15 mils of cachaca, you can really taste it. I'm gonna stay a little closer. Still still going to introduce a new spirit here that wasn't part of the, um, isn't part of a pina colada. So I'm, st I'm still very heavy with pineapple. I'm happy with the pina name. Can't really call it a pina colada though. So pina colada colliding with this 1800 uh, coconut infused tequila, which is a really lovely um, tequila and it's adding a, a bit of extra coconut uh, flavor to the pina colada. So there's 30 mils of the coconut tequila. So between the clarified pina colada mix, which probably has about 45 mils of um, Bacardi white rum in it and 30 mils of the coconut uh, tequila. That's the spirit base for this, uh, for this cocktail. Now we'll give this a good shake and get it nice and cold. You really do want, you know, you're assuming that you're drinking these pina coladas in very warm weather or warm environments. That's one of the reasons I, you know, in that, sort of situation I move away from a cream based drink. The good thing about clarifying this through milk is it gives you that milky creaminess in the flavour without putting the actual creamy elements into the glass. So I, I think Steve the bartender was really onto something there and there's, there's some other clarified recipes out there. So this might not look too difficult because you, I already had the clarified um, pina colada mix to go, but this is, this is a pretty involved cocktail. This is probably, maybe with the exception of the zombie and the Ramos gin fizz, I think this probably even a little bit harder than them. So uh, this is gonna take you a little bit of work if you wanna try the pina colada. But I think for a sort of contemporary palette, if you're willing to sort of let go of just the pineapple and the, the rum and add a little bit more range into the uh, cocktail, I'm still going to garnish it with a pineapple slice and a cocktail cherry. Uh, then you have a 2021 Pina Collider.
and I know I've made that myself. So, you know, tooting my own horns seems seems a little bit, uh, I don't know, I'm uncomfortable with it. But I'm very happy with that cocktail. I, I really think uh, if you try this, uh, you'll like it. There's definitely coconut, there's definitely pineapple, there's definitely lime, there's some richness coming from the falernum and the ginger. And I think the coconut tequila really just adds a little bit more to the range that wasn't there there before. So it's not a pina colada. It, this is a different cocktail. I've had a little bit of a look around. I can't see anyone else has done quite the same mix. So I think after 60 cocktails and as we move into the 1950s and beyond, I'm gonna start um, playing around with some of the mixes, especially the ones I don't think are quite um, up to the contemporary palette. And I've, I've played around with a couple of bit not as much as this. This is sort of, uh, I'll claim this as an invention uh, and I'll commend it to you in this uh, warmer weather, perhaps not getting caught in the rain like today. Make yourself a pina colida. It's gonna take you a little bit of time. If you make plenty of the clarified mixture, you can have that by itself or use that. Going, and then this is not such a hard cocktail to make if you've got that sitting in the fridge. And if you want to preserve an ingredient like that, you can always put some of the tequila in with the clarified mix. It's already got some alcohol in it. it should last probably a month in the, in the fridge. So there we go, the pina colida. Cheers. Bye for now.